Hi, I'm Omni Sunday. Evolution gets really weird on islands because of how small populations get stuck there. I'm going to talk about some animals that evolved on islands in a planet called Origin. Endemic to Pinwheel Island, screw hairs are the largest living lagomorph. They're also one of the fastest runners on the planet, reaching speeds faster than 90 kilometers per hour. Their large eye sockets are set high on their head, giving them a huge field of vision. They're known to smell particularly musky and have scent glands on the sides of their face. They're so big due to a phenomenon called island gigantism, which commonly makes small critters big when they evolve on islands. It happens due to a lack or variety of predators and a lack of competing niches. Basically, being small is great to avoid predators and eat less food, but if no one else is there to eat what you eat or eat you, then you can get bigger to maybe beat up the predators you do have. In the case of the screw hair though, it evolved alongside a predator. Wind cats are the fastest running predators on the planet, able to reach 105 km per hour, though they can't maintain speed as long as the screw hair. They are quite large, but more closely related to cougars and smaller cats like the Pusa cat than the more heavily built jaguar. They are especially evolved for speed and are more scrawny than they look. With Pinwheel Island being right off the eastern coast of the Orient, it was discovered by the people of Esperig long ago. They tamed wind cats for use in hunting, and were useful enough that they still persist in some areas as big domesticated kitties. Domesticated wind cats are also known as vinics, and can actually breed with pussy cats to make hybrids called vin cats. Vin cats are really just big kitties, though depending on how much vinix blood they have, they might need a lot of exercise, hunting practice, or even walkies. Uh, anyway, that does not have much to do with island evolution, so I'll move on. Island dwarfism is a related concept to island gigantism, but the opposite. It's when big critters get smaller on an island. This might have to do with less food availability, so they shrink because they don't have to be so big anymore. It's weird because it seems like similar reasons small critters get big, but I guess there might be a vague, optimal size to be if you live on an island that's between big critter and small critter. Honestly, not sure. These island evolution theories are vague, and all we really know is that shit gets weird on islands. A great example of it, though, is the teacup plate face of Rakanyor Island, right off the larger low tide island. While its skull alone can grow to surpass half a meter in length, that's compared to relatives like the giant plate face that have three meter long skulls. At nine metric tons, the giant plate face is the largest living land animal. Its closest living relative is the teacup plate face, though, but other relatives are still huge animals, so most likely the teacup evolved to be so small due to island dwarfism. Because of a lack of predators, the teacup is much less aggressive than the average plate face, and can even be approached and pet without warranting a headbutt. The best example of island dwarfism is the Gret. I've talked about it before. While it's common around the Ochitan at this point, it originated on an island. The fun part is that it's descended from a Tyrannosaurid lineage that already went through island dwarfism dozens of millions of years ago, so technically became extra small from two cases of island dwarfism. While the first was the basic getting smaller from less competition and less food availability, the second may have been from the presence of an already established large carnivore. The island Gretz likely evolved on is one of many islands stalked by giant pterosaurs called Asdarkids, so it's likely that the smallest ones survived as they were able to hide and avoid predation just by not being worth eating. Over millions of years, you end up with really tiny tyrannosaurids. But size isn't the only thing that's affected by evolving on islands. These isolated land masses also preserve old lineages that were outcompeted in the mainland. For example, the Orient is home to many primates. Every primate on the mainland, though, has a particular feature that was once thought to be a trait shared by all primates. Their noses are dry, at least on the outside. Comparing that to most mammals like cats and cows, it's somewhat unusual and definitely a defining trait. Most are around 1 to 30 kilograms, but there are large primates like the sphinx and bear monkeys that can weigh more than 80, and these are all classified as monkeys. However, there's also one species called a tarsier that only weighs around 100 grams and is the only dry-nosed primate that isn't technically a monkey. There's also one primate all the way over in a large island on the other side of the world that got there through the glaciant while leaving no surviving relatives. Called the king tamarin, it's more closely related to occidental monkeys than to the tarsier, and could be considered a monkey or not a monkey. But there's an island off the West Anthropogen Peninsula that holds primates that diverged from others near 80 million years ago. It contains two main lineages, one with smaller critters and another with larger, convergently monkey-like critters. 
The main way to tell them apart from other primates is their wet nose, which is most likely basal to primates. The smaller critters include lorises and galagos, while the larger ones are generally called lemurs. Galagos are popular for how high they can jump and the adorable goggle-like film over their face that protects them from dust, wind, and other obstacles while they jump. Lorises are unique for their toxic bite and weak dark magic. Dark magic isn't evil magic, it just comes from a mutation in psychic elementals. I'm really gonna make a video about that that I can refer back to, but basically, psychic gets its power from vision, while dark gets its power from the mind's eye. Lemurs are larger and more monkey-like for the most part. The shefok is a typical lemur, fluffy everywhere but the fingers and around the nose. It's identifiable for how short the hair gets around its face and the color contrast. While it's smarter than the average mammal, it's nothing comparable to most monkeys. They're great at maneuvering the treetops and use their fingers to groom other lemurs they're friendly with. Like many lemurs, it's carnivorous and mostly eats bugs, but will scavenge the corpses of larger animals. A more unusual lemur is one like the Indri. It's the largest lemur with a long neck, long limbs, and a short tail. It lives on the ground and is the top carnivore on the island. While it's very large, you won't know it's there till a twig snaps, and next thing you know, your neck is snapping. They use their dark elemental power to see without seeing in the dark forest they live in, and make the forest they live in difficult to feel safe in. Most lemurs are smaller than these two and tend to be herbivorous, but I thought these two were interesting and clearly quite different from most monkeys. These primates are the only ones left from an ancient lineage, and they give us the chance to look back in time to see how primates evolved. That's all I got for this video. Thanks to Captain Kobop, Art of Dying, Saint Starman, and new subscriber Aster for supporting me on my Patreon. Hmm, if these islands were swallowed up by the ocean, so much biodiversity would be lost. Glad that sort of thing happens over multiple lifetimes, and can be avoided or controlled thanks to modern technology. God damn it.